quote today is, I felt uncomfortable when I drove into the cemetery. The GPS blurted out, you have reached your final destination. Today we look at the life of the great bishop and doctor of the church, the doctor of the divinity of Christ, Saint Hilary of Poitiers, born around the year 300, died around the year 368. And what Saint Athanasius was for the East, Saint Hilary was for the West in defending the divinity of Christ and being willing to suffer for that. Both Athanasius and Hilary were exiled by the Arian emperor at the time and suffered for Christ. We do not have a martyr in St. Hilary, but we do have what's called a confessor for the faith, a white martyr, somebody who did not shed their blood for Christ, but who suffered in exile because of his belief in defending the divinity of Christ. Hilary had a unique background, born into a very wealthy, prestigious, noble, pagan family. His parents remained pagan. He was well-educated in Greek and Latin and philosophy as a young man, but then he was converted to the Christian faith by reading sacred scripture. That's how important it is to read the Bible, especially the first five books of the Old Testament, and then the Gospel of John is what converted him to Catholicism, to Christianity. He had been married as a young man, had a daughter, and then he was baptized at the age of 35. And then, because of his virtue and holiness, was chosen unanimously by the people to be their bishop. And because he was married, he and his wife decided to each enter into religious life and went and separated and went to religious life. In fact, their daughter also was consecrated to God and became what was, I guess, considered a religious sister. She is now a canonized saint, Saint Aubra, the daughter of Saint Hilary. As a bishop, he remained a great defender of the divinity of Christ against the Arian heresy. The Arians denied the divinity of Christ. And so because of that, the emperor exiled him uh, to Phrygia. And he was there for about three years. And this is when he came into contact with the monasteries in the east. And when he was able to come back to Gaul, to France, he was St. Martin of Tours, established some of the earliest monasteries in the West, in Europe, and the famous one of the Monastery of Salem, the Benedictine Monastery, was founded by St. Hilary and St. Martin of Tours. You may know, if you want to hear any good Gregorian chant, listen to the monks of Salem. Some of the most beautiful Gregorian chant in the world has come from this Benedictine Monastery. It's been around now for about 1,600 years. When Hilary was in exile, he composed many works and writings to defend the true faith, the Orthodox teaching. His most famous book is On the Trinity. And he was really just a little, about 100 years before St. Augustine and St. Jerome. And the three of them became some of the greatest doctors of the church. Hilary would also write Christian hymns that would be truly Christocentric, as beautiful poetry as well, defending the divinity of Christ and the teachings of the Council of Nicaea, which we read every day, every Sunday in the Nicene Creed, that Jesus is God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. So after about, um, after returning to the diocese, he eventually died in the year 368, after having lived a life of orthodoxy and holiness. And what's unique about Hillary is that even though he was a staunch defender of the faith and was orthodox and a man firm in the truth, he was always charitable. He was always respectful, even to the Arian bishops and to the emperor, always showing them kindness and respect, even though he would always be a firm a teacher of the orthodox faith. So he's a man who combined orthodoxy and charity, truth and love, and they're not contradictory they really go together, because if you love somebody, you want to tell them the truth. And he was such a great man of that. He was declared a doctor of the church in 1851 by the great Pope Pius IX. And even in Oxford today in Cambridge, they begin their spring term, which we called the Hillary term, because it always begins around January 13th. 
So we pray together. Saint Hilary of Poitiers, pray for us.